Bury. I live in uh, Lancaster, which is about 10 kilometres away from Heesham Reactors 1 and 2, and a proposed third reactor. Um, I also live about 50 miles away from uh, Sellafield, which is the most radioactively polluted site in Europe. Uh, I work for a social enterprise company establishing the first allotment site in Lancaster for 40 years, and I generally encourage people to grow their own fruit and veg. And I'm uh, working with my local campaign group, HANA, the Eastern Manta Nuclear Alliance, who are a mixture of local campaigners, uh, local councillors and scientists opposed to uh, nuclear reactors in general, but specifically our uh, Eastern 3. I'm also part of a national network called the Stop Nuclear Power Network, which is a campaign, grassroots campaign network uh, comprising of academic scientists, climate activists and uh, local campaign people as well. What we're doing is a high court, an attempt at a high court judicial review against a, the justification of nuclear power stations in the UK. The justification is the key piece of UK law and European regulations which are there to protect communities uh, against the health detriments of nuclear power. And what the Secretary of State should do at this stage is acknowledge the wide body of scientific information which points to increased risks of uh, leukaemias and cancers, particularly in young people and unborn children, and justify those health detriments against the perceived social and economic benefits of the new nuclear power stations. And that's not what Chris Hune, uh, the Secretary of State for Energy and Climate Change, has done. He's cut the corner of acknowledging that wide body of scientific um, evidence. There's a number of uh, reasons that we're challenging on. One of the main reasons is the acknowledgement or lack of acknowledgement of the full body of scientific evidence that should have been brought forward at the justification stage, for instance, the kick study. Um, the second or another reason is the, the government are trying to say that they'll do the work later on in terms of the justification. And the law is very clear that they have to do it now because later on they've the government and industry and communities have invested billions of pounds in the building of uh, the reactors. So it's they have to do it now before that money is spent. And thirdly, it shouldn't have been the Secretary of State uh, in charge of promoting new nuclear because that looks like there's an appearance of bias. So the Health Secretary would have been a more suitable role for signing off on the health detriments than the Secretary of State Chris Ewan in charge of promoting new nuclear power stations. At the moment, this case isn't causing any delay to the government's uh, war machine of nuclear propaganda. Um, if it was successful in court in autumn 2011, I'm not aware that it would cause any direct delay to the, to the move for the Renaissance. Um, I think the significance of this case is about clearing the murky waters um, by acknowledging some of the health detriments to communities and also causing embarrassment um, for the government, sending them back to the drawing board and showing the nation, the world, that the UK government, the nuclear industry as a whole, are willing to uh, cut legal corners and moral responsibilities in pushing forward with their own agenda. Uh, we go to uh, the High Court in London in early May, I think, for a procedural hearing where a judge will decide whether the case should be heard in full uh, on its merits. Until then, it's uh, very difficult to know the time scale, uh, but I presume within the next six months, this will, if we're successful, um, come to court. It's, it's difficult for me to know what my chances of success are. I, I grow veg and encourage people to grow veg for a living. Um, Certainly, the I hope that we're successful. I think the, the, the main thing is that we're challenging and confronting government and industry at every point um, and pushing them to explain, uh, try and explain what they're doing um, 
in order to push them back and stop them from new nuclear. So the opportunity to talk to people and to raise as a campaigning issue um, the health detriments to communities is, is a great opportunity. Um, if we're successful, that yeah, that that would be wonderful. But I, I'm not sure about the uh, the percentage chance of, of success. Um, I think if that does happen, the the implications on the the nuclear industry and the government will mainly be embarrassment. Um, it will be very embarrassing for them to potentially have to go back to the drawing board and acknowledge the the full health risks and detriments to communities uh, that nuclear power stations that they've been promoting feverishly uh, for the last three, four years. Um, I think they find that very embarrassing. But I'm also remembering the, the 2006 judicial review that Greenpeace brought against the consultation um, and the High Court judge found it to be flawed and inaccurate and misleading and the very next day Tony Blair came out and said this won't stop the government from telling lies and promoting new nuclear power stations and I think in reality we have to be careful because Chris Hume would probably do something very similar to that and come out and say we respectfully disagree with what the judge has said but we'll do it but it won't stop us because we're going to push ahead. Um, so the main, the really important thing is that we, we challenge government and we challenge the industry at every step, keep them on their toes and push them back and start winning the arguments against new nuclear and in favour of the, the other alternatives like energy reduction, uh, energy efficiency and um, the alternatives like wind, micro -renew micro generation and things like that. Uh, so I'm working with uh, people within my local campaign group, the Hisham Anti-Nuclear Alliance, as well as the Stop Nuclear Power Network, both campaigners and scientists who are aware of these issues and supporting me through this process. Um, the, the law firm is called Irwin Mitchell and they've lodged papers on my behalf. Uh, there's a team specialising in regulatory law that, um, from, from Irwin Mitchell and Dr Ian Fairley is um, bringing the scientific expertise about uh, radiation impacts on um, communities. Currently I'm um, legally aided because I basically live hand to mouth. Um, that The exact terms of my legal aid is still being established but it looks like it's going to be something like um, the Legal Aid Commission wanting a £16,000 contribution from the community and uh, wanting 10% of my expendable income um, per month, which is about 50 quid a month, um, for the duration of uh, this case. I'm really grateful for the support that I've received both from my community and from anti-nuclear campaigners uh, further afield. Um, I'm, I'm grateful to Erwin Mitchell for, for um, taking up the case and uh, taking on the challenge with such vigour and um, to Dr Ian Fairley for um, having such a broad depth of knowledge and understanding and being able to communicate that in a way that, um, that I've uh, been able to understand really, really easily. Um, and I, I, I just hope that whether it's uh, uranium mines, uh, health detriments from reactors or the, the lack of a solution for all that nuclear waste that we've got, that as an anti-nuclear community we can grow and um, have some notable victories in the in the coming years to stop a nuclear renaissance at, at the door at the UK and push that further afield so that it's not um, taken around the world as a solution to, to climate change. <laughs>